for Wine and She Show is a Metaverse and NFT discussion interview series brought to you by Upland Development United and the host Ben 68 and More Cheese. Warning, the information and opinions within are solely the views of the individuals involved contains content not suitable for anyone. G'day and welcome to Season 1, Episode 18 of the Wine and Cheese in the Metaverse show. A special, whoops, we're supposed to be on break, mini episode where More Cheese and I chatted to WX33, who was a young kid with some amazing insight into the potential future of NFTs in the Metaverse. Today, we talked to Ben68's son, Keanu, a.k.a. WX33, and he taught us a thing or two, or three, or five, or ten about the Metaverse, and how it can be improved, and also the pros and cons. So grab a seat, you old fossils, and get ready to be schooled by a member of Generation Future in the very first episode of the year. Of the worst show ever. Wine and cheese. Time for wine and cheese. Wine and cheese. Time for wine and cheese. One is a wanker, one's like it stumps, one's from Australia, one's from the Bronx. Talking about the metaverse and NFTs, interviewing all the real crypto keys. Welcome to the Wine and Cheese Surprise. Happy New Year's, end of the year, beginning of the year, like the end of the year episode. So it's going to be point 18. We have nice. a special guest with us today. Um, will this guest be convening with us during the conversations to give his own little opinion? Oh, I would imagine so. If he wants to jump in when once we get up and rolling, yes. Awesome. So, yeah, uh, we're supposed to be on break, but we're being naughty, and I guess we can't help ourselves. We're flipping a, a surprise episode out there. We were fiending. We were fiending for the wine and the cheese. Jonesing. <laughs> nice. <laughs> All right, so, shall we get straight into it? Let's just jump yeah. right in. Yeah. All right. So this one caught my eye straight away. What the metaverse means for you and why you don't get it. Our digital future, a speculative bubble or both. The promise, the challenge and the great virtual land grab of Web 3.0. Well, let's ask um, we're not gonna... Let's ask him, what, what does the metaverse mean for you? When you hear metaverse, there's really no right or wrong answer. Just like, what do you think of? When um, you think... The virtual world, like everything is pretty much online. It You can interact with other people that are, in real life just on a digital platform you got it he gets it he gets it he gets um, it this is why i wanted to talk to him because yeah he's the generation that's going to take you know we're kind of like the old people that you know are the wright brothers we're, we're making our airplanes out of cardboard and paper and bits <laughs> of balsa wood and <laughs> he's the generation that's going to turn it into fighter jets so um, this might be, oh, it looks like we're stooged out of it, but yeah. Oh, oh what, what is it? What the metaverse means for you? All right, talk. I'll see if I can find it for free. <laughs> Good at that. Yeah, I had it, had it up before. Maybe you only get one, one link, but yeah. So a speculative bubble. So that's a bit of an interesting, interesting one. There's a lot of talk when you hear the old, um, rosy nosed bankers get on the financial shows on the traditional media. You always hear them talking about how um, Bitcoin and all the rest of it, the crypto is just a, it's a big speculative bubble and this, that, and the other thing. Um, but you know, the financial financial review, that's a pretty, pretty well-known publication and it's full of metaverse and things like that. NFT talk at the moment. So it's all very interesting. And some people are pretty slow to get their heads around the whole metaverse thing. And I guess that's what it's referring to where it says why you don't get it. Um, maybe our guest WX33, maybe you can, maybe you can explain why you think some people just don't understand what the metaverse is about. Probably because they're more interested in the real world and they hardly spend time in the virtual. So then they might have trouble figuring out what the metaverse is as they have had way less experience than some people might have. 
Oh yeah, that sounds fair enough. So, so what would your experience be so far in the metaverse? Um, I've been playing like different evolution of games went from just NPCs, CPUs, and now finally real people online. I've been starting to play more online where you interact with real player games so I can get more invested into the metaverse. So what's the main core sort of games you're playing at the moment? Um, right now I'm playing a kind of dinosaur game called Dino Tamers. Um, there's this mode that I normally play where you interact with other players, battle it out. You're breaking up, us on, breaking up on us there, mate. What'd you say, Dino Tamers? Yeah. Dino. Uh, looks like we got some pretty average internet over there. So wait, Dino Tamers, this is a blockchain game? Uh, I'm not really sure, but... No, it's, it's a, not a blockchain. Oh, okay. Yeah. Are you familiar with a game called Blocktos? Blocktos. It's sort no, of like... Well, it's sort of like Roblox, but it's on a blockchain. And basically, uh. it's these... Um, mazes that that they create and then it's such a beautiful world and it's so easy to navigate you should get them on this ben um they, well i can't say it here but i've i've been in talks with these people and uh my my our people are talking to their people remember nice. that yeah mm. and um basically you can create maps and submit them and get um the a co the coin for that game for that or you could just go through their maps and just level up and the more the more maps you do the more you reveal and it's very cartoony it's very like cutesy like I enjoy it as an adult cool. yeah I've I've taken a note there about dino tamers we'll we'll speak to that a bit bit further on we'll get into yeah. that so were you able to find this article cheese or should we move on? Oh, I sent you something that was similar, but not the same, but it still talks about the metaverse. If that's... Uh... Um, let's see if that comes up. Five things to know. Oh, now my computer's dying. Don't you just love Australian internet? <laughs> metaverse. Five things to know and what it can mean for you. Um, we know, yeah, Facebook's rebranding as meta, blah, 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 blah. Uh, there's a lot of talk about science fiction, and we know that, especially with the new Matrix movie coming out. Um, okay, so here's the five things, I guess. Number one, it's a virtual world. This is the most important characteristic. You can explore it. I think everybody knows that aspect of the metaverse, that it's yeah. kind of what WX said was, you know, interacting. What did you say? Interacting with people in the digital realm Online. or something? Yeah, no. like the other part is virtual reality. So I guess with the metaverse, there's two main parts there. We have virtual reality and augmented reality, VR and AR. What, what do you know about those? Um, virtual reality, it, it puts you in the world. It's by wearing a headset of goggles. And while with the AR, it, you're still in the real world but you can play the game and it makes things that aren't in the real world real while you're still interacting with the real worlds. So pretty much Pokemon Go. You, you might see a Pokemon on your phone right there, but in real life, it won't be there. Yeah. Yeah, that sounds... I'm I think so Pokemon Go is a pretty good example. I'm so impressed with you. Like, how can, may, I, may I ask how old you are? Nine. Nine, wow. I was still playing with Barbies at night. <laughs> still playing with my nose, I think. <laughs> yes. So, oh, this this is kind of the point you were talking, number three, other people. The metaverse is social. There are lots of other people there represented as avatars. Now, you, you've got your kind of online name as WX33, and I guess you can see in my background, my avatar is like a little samurai dude and cheese has got her cheese with stacks of money have you ever put any thought into what your avatar might be um i'm not really sure yet 
Don't know. Wait yeah, and see. I don't know. Yeah, you got to. It's going to come to me. It's going to come to you. You can't like just do it on the spot. You got to kind of like brainstorm. Nice. Maybe the <laughs> avatar does. You don't pick the avatar. The avatar picks you. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Um. So yeah, you can hang out with other people or do things together. We know that's what it's about. Let's see. Let's see if there's anything juicy in here. We'll skip over that guy. Persistence. <laughs> hang on. What does this mean? This. Oh, the virtual world is available whenever you want to visit it. Yeah. So you're not waiting for something to open. You're not going there and it's closed. Um, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, no days off. There'll always be something going on. And also with the social part of the metaverse, from other players, see what they do. You can. And you keep better. breaking up on. Can you repeat that last bit? It just keeps freezing up. Uh, wait, so like what part did it stop at? Universe um, or metaverse. Yeah. Oh, uh, yes. Yeah, so, like with the metaverse, since it uses social um, like connections, you can learn from other players online and use those strategies for yourself. It's a learning process kind of. Interesting. And then the last bit here, it says connection to the real world. In some visions of the metaverse, the virtual stuff in the virtual world actually represents real stuff in the real world. For example, you might fly a virtual drone in the metaverse to steer an actual drone in the real world. Ah, that's true. So isn't that kind of what the what they do with the um with the bombing raids and that now? Like they're basically it's the soldiers or whatever sitting in a shipping container playing a video game, but they're actually dropping real life bombs. Yeah. That's kind of a scary part of it. Like people always talk about the the worries and dangers of the metaverse, but it's already happening. It's already out there. And you can learn to fly a plane with the flight simulator. Yeah, same kind of thing. So what can we do in the metaverse and how soon? Oh, sorry, Matt, what were you going to say? Um, Like with the connection, like toys actually use it. So you download an app on your device and then it will show you what you can do to create the code for the robot. There's a lot of kids' toys like that nowadays or interacts mm. with the metaverse. I love that. And here I we've got... That some people sitting around with their virtual it does look <laughs> kind of weird doesn't it sitting around in a room with their virtual reality goggles on yeah imagine uh, seeing someone what do you, what do you go sorry ahead. go ahead imagine just seeing your like someone in your family with virtual headset goggles destroying the house when they don't know <laughs> like when you come home everything's gone it's oh, all no. on the floor. So when you see a picture like this, uh, what is there, five people sitting in a room with headsets on, what do you think about that? Um, it's probably, uh, they're probably playing a multiplayer game where they're all in the same world. Like that's why there would be multiple people, multiple people in the same room. It's because normally there would only be one person with a headset in one room if they were playing solo, but with virtual reality, they can also be multiplayer. Okay, so they might be they might be together in both the real world and the the metaverse. Interesting. Yeah. Now let me ask you a question, Keanu. Uh -huh. Do you think it'll come to the point where you'll be walking down the street and you'll see people like them with their headsets on that can see regular, but can also see like news coming in and messages coming in and whatnot. Like you're work, you're walking around with your virtual goggles on. Yeah. Normal down the street, and people are just like in their own little encased world, sort of thing. Yeah. So like pretty much the game would become into the real world, like Minecraft. The whole world will turn into QB. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. What do you think of that? Positive or negative or in between? I think in between, because you're getting attached to the metaverse, but you're also still in the real world. But it's kind of bad because you stay in the screen too long, you could get carried away. But it's also good because you might be able to interact with other people if they're playing the exact same game. But if they are not, and they're just walking around, they could be like an NPC character from the game. So then like you could go around with your friends, go go to the mall or something and do some fun things in the game. Like I agree. Play about. I agree. Like when, when I look back in the Bronx, we 
my husband and I used to walk around playing Pokemon Go and we met so many people like they had these little hot spots everywhere that you would go to do battles and you could take it over and we met so many people like people walking their dog or you know a family with their baby carriage and it was these older people and we made so many friends just being in the metaverse we made real life friends so there is a good uh, pros and cons and the in between where people can kind of try to uh, combine it. Very good. Yeah, well, that, that's some of the positives. Now, I think this is a good segue into this article here where it says metaverse can cause addiction and loss of cognitive skills. So, yeah, if addicted. you... <laughs> if, you're, yeah, if you're in the metaverse too long, you, you may become addicted to it and loss of cognitive skills. That's interesting. Were you like, so you, you all over yourself? Yeah. So... <laughs> Oh, He's got to go with a top under your chin. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> WX, what do you think are some of the other things to be wary of or some of the dangers or things to look out for if you are interacting in the metaverse? Um, try to not interact too much with people you don't know. It's because then you could get in, like, trouble if you meet them in real life if you do something wrong. So you got to be very careful when you're interacting or chatting on the metaverse with people you don't really know. Mm. Just stay very careful. So that kind of goes to any sort of social media too, doesn't it? Whether you're playing any sort of game, whether it's a metaverse game or not. Yeah. So this here, it says people under the age of 18 should not spend more than one hour on metaverse. That sounds cool. Yeah, that sounds... Sounds that's fair a, enough. Yeah, fair. Um, I think when they talk about, like, when they talk about that metaverse, I think they mean, like, virtual reality, since it isn't good to stay too long in virtual reality, because you might think the real world is it, maybe. Like, I think it's just talking about the virtual reality kind of metaverse. Hmm. Like, Interesting. But, like, regular, where you're just playing on your device or something, it can be at least more than an hour, but not, like fully indulged into the game like VR headsets. I see what you mean. Like have one hour for metaverse and like maybe one hour for regular video games. Yeah. I agree with that because I am a gamer and like I can't have, if I had to choose between the two, I think I would go crazy. Cause like I'm playing Far Cry 6 now and I would need an hour for Far Cry 6 and then I would need an hour for my Upland. Yeah. yeah. So he, that's a good point. Yeah, and there's that. There's other aspects of that too. Like if I haven't, I've never actually played around with it myself. But if you're wearing a VR headset, I believe there, some people come out of that with vertigo and feeling dizzy, and it takes their bodies a while to adjust back. Like you just came so back from space. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this it's next like quote's to... interesting. Sorry, mate. What were we gonna say? It's like going to space without any training, and then when you come back, you feel totally dead. Like, there you go. Oh, Perfect. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, it says here the metaverse is surely a delighting, delight. What is it? Delighting experience which will increase the risk of addiction. Well, yeah, nobody would get involved if it wasn't delightful. If it wasn't fun to do, <laughs> nobody would do it. Yeah, like if you didn't really like, if it wasn't very like delightful, you would never get addicted at all. Exactly. Yeah, and it's it's not like you're going to do something that you don't enjoy. So that's kind of a bit of a strange yeah. one. Yeah, you don't get addicted to falling on the floor. <laughs> <laughs> definitely, definitely not. Definitely. Not. Or banging. So this into is interesting. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you're an NPC, they seem to be addicted yes. to banging into poles. <laughs> yep. So here it says the metaverse, which is called the future of the internet, enables people to meet in the, in the virtual world platforms. So, yeah, we know that. Um, the future of the internet, that's kind of funky. Now, you're somebody who, like, I didn't really get involved in the internet at all until it might have been the mid-90s when I was at university. Um, so what's that, 15, maybe 16 years ago? So you've been interacting with the internet your whole life. Can you imagine a world yeah. without the internet? No. 
<laughs> you know, I, I started in the late nineties cause I I'm a couple years younger than you, Ben, but mm. I started, I started maybe 98 and that was when I got my first computer and it was such an experience that I can't explain it to you. And my dad didn't want to touch it. He's like, oh, whatever. And then one night I wake up to get some water and he's on there, like tap, tap, tapping with his two little fingers because he doesn't know how to type. And it gets to the point where, you know, I have to fight him for the computer. And <laughs> you like, I, I know like I've, that I was like maybe 19 at the time. And I can't remember life. Like, I know I had to deal with life before the internet, but I can't remember much of it. If I don't see pictures and I'd be like, oh yeah, I kind of remember that. I won't really remember. Mm, interesting. Okay. Yes, this next one's good. And this will be related to you because you are a primary, primary school age kid. So yeah. they say... Um, children face real threats by the metaverse. We see that children at the age of primary school education have difficulty in differentiating the real world from the virtual one. So do you have trouble differentiating what's the real world and what's the digital virtual one? I have no idea what differentiating even means. Like, like tell the difference. Can, like, like Yeah, I can of... easily tell the difference. I mean, in the real world, not everything is possible. In games, anything can be possible. Like in the metaverse, you can make anything possible pretty much. There you go. Very good. All right. I don't know if there was much more to dive in there. Um, but, yeah, anyway, that's all. There's a lot of articles like this that we're seeing where where people are kind of, I don't know if they're saying that it's scary, but there seems to be a lot of warning signs. You know, the metaverse is here. Be careful. It's a bubble. You're going to lose all your money. You're going to be addicted, blah, blah, blah. So there's always lots of talk about the bad things. Um, what are some other good things about it? You, If you have, like, friends, you can easily contact them in games like that you want to play instead of having to walk all the way to their house or asking your mum and then you just got to play on the same console. You can play online so you don't have to go anywhere and you can stay at your place and still enjoy playing with your friend. Interesting. I guess we kind of missed over some part. No, normally Cheese likes to get to know the people we're interviewing. Did you oh. have any questions related to that, Cheese? Oh, yeah, but we are I thought we were talking about the article and then we're going to get into interviewing. We've all frozen up. WX. Yeah, like, yeah. Can you tell us a little bit more about yourself? What are you interested in? Sorry, my computer was just totally frozen. <laughs> I am very interested in, like, those not fully interacting games, but you can slightly interact with the player that's online. So you can kind of make small connections and friendships, learn things for the game and a lot of good things. I'm very interested in, like, how games can actually teach you real-life good things. Like how to talk to people in a nice way online you can if you practice a lot online you can get very good in the real world and you can make a lot of good friends and so a lot you, less enemies <laughs> so you like games where you can kind of network in the sense where like you have you're playing minecraft and you have a certain mineral to to build with or grow with and this other person has farming tools right so yeah like you could kind of trade, interact, and work together as a team sort of thing. Yeah, like if I just had a certain amount of, or I had a lot of one block, and my friend had another, we could make this multicolored special kind of building. Like they had certain seeds for like the crops, and then I had different. We could like make a huge farm. It's and that's like, so cool. Yeah, I like that. And you said you've made stuff in Minecraft already. Yeah, a lot of things. I've Talk made some very, like, technical things where you need to be very, very, um, like, great to do it. Like, I used Redstone, one of the mechanics in Minecraft, like, where you just flick a switch and then the lights turn on on the roof. I know the Redstone. It's like the electricity, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. I just use a lever as the switch. Um, build the walls to be thicker so then the redstone can go in, go up to the roof, and then on the roof, there's some lamps, and then it switches them on. That's so cool. So, like, 
I have a, I was telling you offline before we started this, I have a, a land plot in Uplift World and I went in there a little bit, uh, but I'm, I'm used to different games. I'm not really used to Minecraft so much. So I can get you like whitelisted with Ben to come in on your free time whenever and just play around with it if you wanted. Sure. I can make like half Udu, half wine and cheese. Yeah, like, and like, you can just do a however you want it. Built. Yeah, that would be so amazing. That you, You're part of the team now. Look at that. Yeah. Put your pinkies up. <laughs> nice. <laughs> now you <laughs> now you you um you I also I also heard you were interested in uh NFTs. Yeah, um I also had an idea for like the special NFT for this episode, like Ooh. yeah. Tell me <laughs> so like there would be just this black kind of like a shaded kind of colored not color just a shadow like pretty much of a person looking into this big city that's like online so there would be like flying cars and stuff like that Ooh. like your first like you finally look into the metaverse and you see what's going on I get I, I could picture it like I see two black um like kind of like it's like a widescreen TV black things and then a guy is looking behind from behind there with his his fingers and you see like the back of his face and outside is like this whole like cyberpunk type kind of world yeah is that is that what you're seeing yeah that's what I'm seeing I could do that cool look at that so what do you know about nfts what are what are NF nfts to you um they're pretty much like pokemon cards you trade them online pretty much you buy them you like the selling of nfts and other people buying it is pretty much the trading part like you can buy more get more advanced have fun with friends like by sharing your nfts nfts just you did used to start out as people just drew a painting of something, turn it into an NFT online, like famous paintings would be online as an NFT. And look how it's evolved from just pieces of paper with a painting on them to now actually including some very like special online things. Like utility. So, yeah. How it even includes games now like Upland as NFTs and all those extra things. I mean, now there's even special kind of YouTube videos that, aren't on YouTube anymore because they've been transferred as an NFT and have been sold for like a million dollars. Like it really, it lets people own what they normally couldn't for a big price, but it's worth it when you actually get your hands on the original copy. It feels good. Like when you get an NFT that you worked hard for. I agree. And you know, you're the Pokemon. Have you ever collected Pokemon cards? Yeah, I actually got a very rare one from like 2019 series that you can't get anymore. The mm. only ones I've ever seen are actually fakes. I have a real one. They're very rare now, I think. Because even those have utility. Because it's like, isn't Pokemon like a card game? And yeah, it's a trading their, card game. And they have their own like different powers and, and whatnot. Yeah. Look at that. Do you um do you do any kind of um because i like you the architecture in minecraft to me is is art like i think i feel like anyone who can do that is pretty much an, an an artist and i've seen some of your yeah. your draft works your dad showed me uh a few like you you map it out a bit before you set it up is uh is there anything else that you kind of do like um in terms of writing or drawing um i normally like figure out how many blocks or wide it's going to be and then slowly build the structure piece by piece. And I keep looking at the paper knowing to follow the plan. And if it doesn't go, I can make slight modifications so then it works. Are you interested in being like an architect in the future or is there anything else? Um, I'm going to be a YouTuber and my other part job, I don't know what it's going to be. Like YouTubing I'll do as a kind of hobby, but I haven't really thought of my real job yet. Well, if you like putting like structures together and figuring out like the 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 math behind it, you know, you should look into architecture. That that's uh, oh. something that I think you would be good with. Oh, okay, I think I think I might try to get 
invested in that, see if I like it. Ah, you're so young. You have your whole life ahead of you. (laughs) Yeah. As we said, I think when I was nine years old, I was picking my nose and flicking boogies at my sisters. (laughs) Yeah. Um, before you mentioned, what was it, Dino Tamers, was it? I'd just like to go yeah. back to that. You said that wasn't a blockchain game. You said it's just a regular kind of game. Yeah. What What parts of that, or first of all, can you tell us, you know, what is that game about? What do you do in that game? Just a basic idea. Um, Like you have to complete different quests in the story mode. There's a kind of things you can do. It's You can pretty much do whatever you want. There's different areas, like there's a huge map. Your goal is to try and complete all the quests. Quests give you rewards to level up your avatar and like there's events which you can buy like special armor pieces or new dinosaurs with the new currency for the event. Okay, so now is this real money? Like you said, you you're getting rewards, you're leveling up your avatar. Is this something that's real money or is this just in-game money? In-game money. Like the the in-game money is pretty much silver. You can't – oh, no, it's gems. Gems you use to buy like dinosaur eggs and stuff like that. But to get gems, since they're very rare, normally people would spend money to trade in for the – since they're very rare. The only way you can get them is from like chests or daily things and like – it's very tricky, but the good thing is about Dino Tamer, you're free to play. You don't have to follow the tasks in story. You can just go around adventure the map. Nice. Now, you and mentioned free. Oh, sorry. Finish what you were saying. Yeah, like there's two other different modes called PvP multiplayer and survival. Survival, you got to keep your hunger and first very high so then you don't die and you also got to battle it out with other players online to score points and then points give you food which you use to level up your dinosaurs nice to get better it sounds pretty in-depth like yeah if you're leveling up avatars and grinding for rewards and that um you, you did mention free to play do you know what the differences are between free to play pay to play and especially what's becoming more popular with blockchain games now is paid to play like the paid to play you play a certain game and then they might pay you with a currency like in a ton of games if you install an app and do a kind of quest in it in game it will give you their currency like the in-game currency if you complete those tasks i've seen a lot of games that i have doing that now or like you have to download other apps and then try and complete different things in them to earn rewards in the actual regular game that you're trying to get the rewards for. It's an, it's kind of a good thing that you you have an easy access to getting it, but it can also lead you to addict, addiction by just staying on the screen so you can get all those tasks done and get all the rewards. And But the good thing is, like, you get the currency, you can... You can complete more of a game. It's just, it has its ups and downs, pretty much. For sure. Now, we'll just stick to Dino Tamers again because it seems like a game you're familiar with. Um, yeah. How do you think that game could be, maybe even if it wasn't that exact game, but how do you think a game that was like that could be changed or modified to include things like NFTs? Um, maybe, like, you could get special kind of rewards which would allow you to get an NFT on your account so then you can sell it and it would like there would be special quests where you can get exclusive rare NFTs like let's say you tame one of the I mean you get the hardest dinosaur the evolution free mosasaur then you could get like a very rare golden NFT where it's worth like a hundred dollars like a hundred dollars in the real world you mean yeah like you could sell it and you can also sell it for in-game currencies. Like, I think, like, it, it would evolve that you can actually trade NFTs for in-game currencies. Like, you could sell, I don't know, a specific NFT and any games you have on that device, you can actually use those apps. And depending on the price, it would be how much you use that price to buy the currency, because normally you can buy the currencies in-game it would give you that amount. Like, let's just say a gem, 200 gems costs $3 and you get an NFT that's worth $3. You would get the 200 gems. 
I like that. I would play that. Yeah, because then it gives. I downloaded gives your game. Oh. Oh really? Cool. <laughs> yeah, you'll it's have really to give us some fun. tips. Yeah, you'll have to give me some tips. The most important thing: stay away from very weird-looking dinosaurs, such as. Well, deadlier looking ones, like a Brontosaurus Evolution 2 with these weird stringy things on its head. Evolution 2s will kill you, while Evolution 1s just get cautious. (laughs) Nice. So you're nine years old now, and this kind of all this NFT metaverse stuff has really only started to explode out into the wider public within the last year. Um, what do you think you're going to be doing in, say, six years when you're 15 years old? How do you think um, the, the future of the metaverse and NFTs is going to change? I think Upland would have, like, the new life tokens you were talking about. It would it would have maybe, like, specific life token upgrades to get, like, better living things. Like, Upland would be upgraded. All the, like, pretty much a lot of metaverse games would have like slight additions which could make the game a lot better and more feel like you can interact with real players. Like you could, in Dino Tamer, you could actually like interact with them a bit more by like actually using a head a headset to actually chat to them instead of having to type it in. And like it could make it a lot easier just with adding the headphone and mic thing so then you can actually talk with other people a lot easier, which could make more people actually get invested to it because it would be easier to com- communicate with. You could play with your friends, join different lobbies, so then you can be in the same one. So then you can just chat to each other pretty much. Oops. So that's in, what, what did I say, six years. So when you're 15 years old. Yeah. What, what about when you're... What about when you're leaving school and you're looking for a job, say, when you're 18, 19, 20? What, what do you think the the world's going to be like then? I think maybe, like, VR headsets would actually be upgraded. Like, it would give you little buzzes of electric shock when you get hurt in the game. Like, it would actually feel like you got impaled or something, just with a slight <laughs> uh, electric shock, which gives you the feeling. We've been talking about that in a few of our wine and cheese episodes. That's called haptics. Yeah, it's kind of like feedback. Yeah. They have a glove where you can actually, when you touch something in the virtual reality, it has Does it little... Does feel like it? Yeah, like it has little air bubbles in there that kind of touch your hand in different spots. It's really cool. I think the evolution of Dinotamers would be like virtual reality where like you can actually feel like you're riding the dinosaurs. Like there would be special kind of, I feel like in the future there will be like different stores or places where you can buy like special room modifications to make it like you're in game. Like the Dinotamers, you could get this robotic kind of dinosaur with a saddle and then you could just jump onto it and then actually, and then it would like Bring around, around, like, like how it's moving. Ball. Yeah, like if you're moving forward, it will just have a kind of bumping wave that that it's like it's running around. And like when when you like jump into a river, it will create a kind of water splashing. Like it, you could even like maybe it could even add like a water feature where you get a tiny spray on your face like right next to you on the robot when you r- jump into a river like water squirts in your face or you have like a vest on and it fills yeah. up the air and compresses you like squeezes you so like the pressure of the water and makes you kind of feel like like the water is is going back and forth on you the yeah. air moves right oh look at that create it <laughs> 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 I got some ideas about Upland. Like, I have multiple different ideas, like rooftop gardens, upgrades to samurai samurai aquatics, like the pools. And um, I've also thought of creating an app for Upland called Upland Live. So you can scan things in the real world and then actually put them in your Upland property. Wow. Like, if you, That's like you awesome. Could, like, you could scan your house and then you could use it and build it as your property and you can also buy like the actual design of a real house to the specific property so like let's just say you have my house you you could actually build what it looks like in game i like that 
I think you should put that in feedback, Ben, and say this is from, you know, my nine-year-old son who is a freaking genius. (laughs) Except they got rid of the feedback channel. Yeah, it's now very laborious to submit feedback. I said the new the new place is actually pretty good. It's nice and neat and clean, and people Mm. can upvote it if it's a good idea, so that the idea stays on top. Cool. And I also. So think like by adding rooftop gardens, like you could get um, a few certain life tokens and you would also need spark to create the building. And you would also need like a bit of UPX to build rooftop gardens, like to build extra things, you would need to spend a bit of UPEX to like get those extra details to make your property stand out. And like, I feel like like in Upland Live, I think you should be able to transfer NFTs and put them in an item frame in your house. I like your idea with the, the rooftop gardens. I think that right there, Ben, is is an amazing idea because of like in the real world, I know in at least in New York, they do a lot of that. Like and, and they utilize all the rooftops for that. So that would be something really awesome to kind of sell in your aquatic store, like you said. I'll yeah. have to look into it. Alrighty, is there anything else you'd like to talk about or tell us about before we wrap up? Maybe something Mm -hmm. like, I don't know, maybe if you were talking to somebody from a different part of the world that might be the same age as you that didn't know anything about the metaverse or something like that, what what would you have to say to someone? Um, If you don't really know about the metaverse, you should try looking into it as it could change your life and make you probably happier but if you're not that interested it's also good to stay out of it as you could get addiction but it's also good to be in it as you can interact with plays online well said. You, well said if you don't play too much like constantly you just play one hour a day then you can actually get really into the metaverse without getting addicted sounds good is there anything else you wanted to finish up on, Chase? Yeah, don't get, um, don't get addicted like me. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a me. lost cause. We're lost causes. But <laughs> yes. I mean, I'm going to be a YouTuber, so probably going to get addicted to one game or two. What are you going to talk about? You know, Are you going to talk about, like, regular games and metaverse games, or? Um, I'm going to probably talk about Upland, join, like, Udu maybe come in the team meetings and stuff like that. Um, I'll try to invest in games that are more popular in the day. So then, like, normally people want you, like, YouTubers to do the newest games that everybody loves. That's my main goal, to, like, actually not for, like, the money and stuff, just to make people happy and interested in the metaverse so then they can have a future life that might be way better than they thought it would be. And you know what, like, like individuals like yourself are actually a really awesome untapped market because you are the future. You, you know what people like, you know what the, the next step up is looking for. So like, like we're lucky to kind of have you Ben and I that we can, we can go to you and ask you questions like, Hey, how do you think this would be perceived? And what do you think of these ideas? So like, we kind of have an an edge into the future with you. Yeah, it's like seriously, if adults think of an idea and then kids like it, you know that more people like younger ages would get invested into the metaverse to make it a better place yeah. and reduce addiction, but still make it a lovely thing to do. Yeah, his his ideas just completely blow my mind. I cannot keep up with him and I don't even try. Yeah. That's amazing. Utilize him, Ben. He's so smart. I'm going to, like, utilize him. Cool. I'm going to show Alrighty. him my stuff. We might wrap it up there. Thanks for joining us today, yep. and we're looking forward to seeing how it all pans out with you. Okay. What you think you got? Later. <laughs> Bye. Go ahead, get your pinky up. Talk about the cheese, motherfucker. Go ahead, get your pinky up. Go ahead, get your pinky up. Cheese, motherfucker. Go ahead, get your pinky up. Go ahead, get your pinky up. Did I say-
sickos. Okay, for this episode's challenge, for you to get your hands on another sick more cheese NFT, like and subscribe to the YouTube channel, and then drop a comment in my video that outlines your ideas for the future of the metaverse. Later. Right, 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 right